Hello and welcome to another episode of the NBA 2K Podcast. I am your host, Reb, and it is the My Team Week coming up. We've got lots to talk about what might or might not be in NBA 2K25 My Team. And I think we'll start with that. I don't, I'm not too sure if we'll have time for anything else. So we'll start with that and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, contracts are back. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that would be that would be hilarious if contracts were back. But I mean, obviously, the biggest thing right off the top is the auction house. You look at other sports games, even with the black markets and real world trading, which is people using real money to buy in-game currency, not using the official sites. Uh, those exist in all the other games, and all the other games continue on matter of fact not only do they continue on there's a lot of content creators that are sponsored by these sites these black market sites selling coins and of course last year uh 2k's opinion of the auction house and all of that going on was to uh remove it and as one would have expected uh, didn't go well. It didn't go well for the community. Lots of my team content creators, uh, obviously not happy. I think most of them were not. I think everybody, nobody was happy about the auction house being gone. Some people took the opportunity to, uh, I guess, make a name for themselves with a lot of creators leaving because of it. And that's all fine and dandy. Uh, 2K also, I think, if I'm not mistaken, have made profits uh, that they have not made before because of microtransactions and with the auction house being gone. Uh, I think that, that increased that number, that dollar amount uh, in revenue, I think, is up as of 2024, as of 2K24, I should say. Um, so there has to be a balance, of course, when you think about this from a business standpoint, uh, the auction house has to come back. So there was one year without it. The community tolerated it for the most part. Obviously money is still coming in. It's not like they lost money. They didn't, even though I've seen a lot of people say they have 2k does not lose money. Uh, but the auction house has to come back because you can't you can't remove the auction house you you can't remove the auction house permanently and so i do think the auction house is back whenever we hear my team news which if i had to assume an educated guess would be on wednesday or thursday and uh it's possible that it's on tuesday but most likely wednesday thursday and again whenever that comes out i'll be making a podcast about it um the auction house is probably not going to be the same right it's not going to be a, a free auction house with the 10 percent what tax that they used to have there's going to be something else going on and i can't i can't think properly about what it could be um at the same time, I do think there are other things coming to my team that people are not expecting that are going to be really cool. Uh, maybe not so much to do with the auction house. I am still a little concerned about how the auction house is coming back. And at the same time, it's, it's things that are going to have to wait until maybe a month after release because whatever the courtside report says about my team and... Uh, what it entails. Uh, it, there are things that are probably not going to translate properly until somebody actually gets on my team and starts playing it for, you know, a week or two or three and uh, gets to actually see how things work, which I don't think the courtside report is going to go over. So auction house is coming back, probably not going to look the same. I think all the other fun modes that people enjoy are going to be back. Obviously, Domination, Triple Threat, Co-op. All of that is going to be back. Um, uh, 
I'm hoping maybe. No, I, I'll say I was gonna say maybe some type of new tournament idea, um, a multiplayer like online, my team, maybe even co-op type of uh, tournament thing, but. I'm just trying to think of fresh things that might be in 2K25 my team and honestly it's it's hard to think about fresh content for my team. Stuff and I, when I say fresh, I don't mean stuff that used to be in 2K and they removed and now they're bringing it back, which like the auction house that's not fresh content. I mean something entirely new. And hopefully I think the biggest thing other than the auction house, which I think would be cool overall and would be neat to see is the addition of WNBA players into the player card pool. I know a lot of people are probably not going to enjoy that, but I think after a while uh, it could be overlooked and even supported. I think once people get to see, you know, WNBA player cards, uh, maybe there's some good ones, you know, they you know how 2k does with the cards and the kind of badges and animations they add to cards but i mean I, that would be cool to see fifa does it a uh, nhl does it so why not why not if you if you can have girl cards in a hockey game you can have girl cards in a basketball game uh regardless of height uh, discrepancy between women and men and and weight muscular musculature and all of that if hockey can do it and it works and nobody's complaining basketball you can do that in my team for sure so to me that would be a, a fresh thing that they haven't done um, they've also had like little sneak peeks I don't know if you guys remember past years they would have like celebrity my team cards you guys remember that i'm wondering if that i mean that was like a test right anytime they introduce special limited time event things with you know outside uh people like celebrities and whatnot i feel like that's a test it's a test run to see how the community likes it or doesn't like it is it worth to expand on it uh, I mean, those coming back would be fine. It'd be whatever. I personally, I don't care too much about celebrity cards. I would enjoy more of the WNBA cards coming to my team. I think they could do a really good job with that. Um, there's something cool that EA does with all their sports games that I would like to see 2K do as well. And that's have like a weekly team that's picked out by you know a professional player or anybody really it's picked out by a big name person it's usually a player uh, of the sport but it doesn't have to be sometimes it's a musician or some other kind of celebrity and basically what this would be in in my team is um so you ask, let's say, let's think of somebody. Let's talk about, I don't know, Jason Williams. So white chocolate. J Jason Williams is a retired guard for the NBA. Um, let's say 2K went up to him. And, I mean, it'd probably be like an email or something. But, hey, give us, give us your, give us your best five, like, or, or five people that you really like uh, in the NBA, like uh, starting five or maybe even a 10 if you want to include a bench. And it would be a community event where people could face Jason Williams' team, basically. And rewards would be, you know, my team coins or virtual coins or maybe extra XP. You can make it a higher difficulty challenge as well so that, uh, you know, not... Not everybody has just an easy time. And these could be, you know, swapped every week. You know, somebody else's team comes in. Um, and if you can't, if it's too much work to get somebody every time to pick out a team, you could also have the 2K team select, you know, uh, 
make it like a the best players from a certain area or uh, uh, best uh, the top five all stars from this year or something something like that just to create create a community event that's like a weekly thing that everybody can complete to uh, accumulate you know currency or, or to get boosted XP or you could even have like a a challenge thing where uh, the more of these you complete like you meet milestones so when you beat five of these teams or ten of these teams you get like certain rewards five ten fifteen twenty whatever so that's another neat idea that you could add to my team are we gonna see any of these things probably not probably just the auction house would be the safe bet um, it's you're not always going to see a bunch of new things in every NBA 2K mode every year just because the cycle of creating content uh, is so short because it's a yearly released game that, uh, yeah, I think I've said this before, but it's hard to create an entirely new game with each mode having a bunch of new things to where it's like substantial, right? Substantial update from the previous year. Overall, the game always gets updates, right? The game always looks better a certain way or plays better a certain way and they add this and remove that and change this. They always do that overall. But speaking specifically about my team in this episode and at this moment, specifically speaking about my team compared to last year it the thing with the auction house is it's going to it's going to the auction house coming back however they do it it's going to have to be a big enough update that people are like okay it's just the auction house that they really added but it, it looks like it's going to be really good so i'm i'm hoping at minimum that yeah maybe they'll change a few things here and there but the auction house is back in a way that's gonna make everybody happy and people will be able to play my team somewhat normally as opposed to last year that's my hope for the minimum minimum my team update um I would be surprised in a good way if they were to add WNBA players to the My Team mode and maybe some other cool co-op modes as well. I would be pleasant, pleasantly surprised. But more on My Team uh, in a few days. This podcast is releasing on Monday. And uh, yeah, My Team News is going to be Wednesday, Thursday. It would be my guess. But like I said, uh, whenever that comes out, I'll make a pot about it. I'll try to get a my team person on here, honestly. I think uh, that would probably be the smartest thing I could do. Try to get somebody to chat with on the pod. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it about my team. Hey 2K community, are you a competitive player who likes money? Prove it on Gamer Saloon. The ultimate arena for NBA 2K players. Whether you're a pro or just starting out, Gamer Saloon lets you challenge players from around the world and win real cash prizes. So no more playing one of you wants to brag about it. Now you can get paid for winning. Gamer Saloon offers a seamless platform with various tournaments and head-to-head -head matches, perfect for every level of player. Listeners of the NBA 2K podcast can sign up today at gamersaloon.com slash ribpodcast. All one word, gamersaloon.com slash ribpodcast. Link in the description. Um, so there's news of Community Day roaming around. Uh, Ronnie making tweets about it and other 2K people and content creators and people are happy and not happy that they're going and not going and I'm not going to talk about that specifically but I'm going to talk about uh, 
the aftermath of Community Day. So, personally, I've been invited twice, and I didn't go both times. Um, but I have been invited, and uh, I've learned a little bit of the process. And I'm not going to, you know, detail everything that goes into it and how 2K picks out, who they pick out, and uh, the reasons why some people are upset when they shouldn't be. Uh, but yeah, so what I want to talk about is every year that Community Day event uh, comes to a close, and... Uh, there's certain people that end up going that end up tweeting or posting about this or that and unfortunately some of those people 9 out of 10 times are saying things as if it's a complete fact and any other idea any other answer to that fact is is not possible. I don't want to name out people, of course, uh, but for example, last year, 2K24, there was a lot of talks about guards requiring defense and strength, or else they would not be able to play point guard properly. Um, if you want to get more information on that, you're going to have to go to Twitter or X or whatever and just go look, 2K24, defense, point guard, uh, then look around August, September. You'll find you'll find the information. It's out there. But I remember reading all of this and, you know, okay, so people went there and they played. They played a little bit of 2K and this is what they've gathered. It, it can't be wrong, right? This has to be an educated... Uh, statement based on their gameplay well what do you know we get into 2k24 release and my favorite build is the point guard with no defense i i average you know 30 whatever points uh, six seven assists per game i average steals with no steal i i get a steal per game and my steal is literally a 25 Literally a 25, and I've had games where I have three or four steals. Uh, uh, rim runners don't always have an easy time getting past me. They do a lot, pretty often, as they should, for me with no defense. But not everybody can do it. I can still guard people. I I can still contest shots. Defense was never actually necessary, is what I'm trying to say. And this isn't just me saying this. There's a lot of other... Uh, 2K League level players that have said that uh, made those comments about people going to Community Day saying you need a defense and defense was actually not not required and that's just one thing. There's other things, and basically, what I'm trying to say here is if you're still listening to this point, whatever information creators or whoever from the community they whatever they tell you as a you need this or else type of statement take it with a grain of salt take it with a grain of salt don't take it as a complete 100 percent factual statement because some of these people uh it could just be like the hype they're just so excited to share information that they're just saying you know something as complete truth even though it's not um in a way you can always take a bit of the truth uh, from whatever statement if they tell you hey you can shoot with this much percent and they make a few shots then you know maybe certain people with with uh whatever shooting attribute it is uh maybe they, they can make it work right but it doesn't mean uh, that everybody has to have that shooting attribute to be able to shoot, for example. just I'm just throwing out examples. I want, I want to generalize because I don't want to specifically pick out anybody from, 
from the community that may be saying things that are not true, I usually mute or block people that say things that are not true constantly. I, I can't stand it. I, I think it's very silly. Um, so I don't get to be in that in that atmosphere very long because I don't get I don't read those things very long. If I see somebody that if I see somebody that's knowingly sharing information that's not true. That's where I draw the line. Some people share information and they don't know that that's not exactly true. And that happens. That's a mistake. That happens. So, to recap, my team, boy, that auction house, that auction house better be amazing. Uh, that auction house better be real good. And let's hope uh, everything goes goes better than last year which isn't a, isn't much isn't much specifically talking about my team they can do it 2k can do it 2k can have a, a way better my team year um, and you know don't believe everything that people tell you even if it's people that should know better all right so with that said uh that's the end of this podcast so thank you for listening please if you have any questions or comments let me know on spotify or youtube wherever you're listening um i try to do these you know like four or five times a week and uh yeah i, I will see you on the next one